What's up guys and welcome back to another video. Today I'm answering the question that many of you have asked in the comments section. Um, is Rusty Rasmus the right choice for Springbok coach? Is he the man to bring take South Africa forward? Is he the man to bring back the pride and and, and the, the, the proudness within a nation, within the Springbok jersey again. So we look at them knowing that they're our team and all that stuff. Is he the right man? My answer is yes. And here's why. Rasi Erasmus has a great um, history of um, coaching within South African rugby and he's coached overseas, which a lot of you guys remind me of. He's a different kind of coach and when I say this I will never forget when he coached the Cheetahs to their first Curry Cup victory. The man has got so many different tactics in taking a team. Firstly, when standing on the stadium waving signs, he was on the roof waving funny symbols that confused the holy heck out of everyone around including the spectators. But it was a strategy that was so different and so talked about and worked. They won the Curry Cup through that. He's a leader. He's been captain of a national team. I think he's captain a few games for the Springboks, if I'm not mistaken. He's definitely captain his provincial teams. Um, he's, he's just, uh, for me personally, an intelligent man who knows a lot about rugby, who loves rugby, has a passion for rugby. And... Um, He's had experience within the coaching camp of South African rugby, so he's been around, he knows the atmosphere, knows the vibe. And personally, from being a player to the captain to a coach, I don't think there's anyone better fit for it at this stage. We've we've had a various, various types of coaches. If we look back, Nick Mallett was probably one of our top in the late 99s obviously then we get to Harry Fulune and Rudolf Strolli who are coaches that South African fans choose to forget because they weren't as great as some thought um, Jake White one heck of a coach outstanding we remember him clearly because he brought us the Tri-Nations he won the Rugby World Cup and he formed a phenomenal team within John Smith Bismarck and all those great players he brought back Percy Montgomery who went from being a little pretty boy to actually a talented rugby player and um, so he changed the face of South African rugby from that we went to Peter de Villiers now Peter de Villiers yeah, he had his moments of, of greatness, but he also had his moments of failure. Um, as a as a motivation guy, I didn't think he was the right man for the job. I'd never forget when we got smashed by the Australians. He went into the into the change room and it was caught on camera and he called them a bunch of cats. You know what that other word is with the P? And to me, that wasn't the way to build it up. Then Dick Muir came in and spoke to the boys and then you could see the motivation. So you need to be able to motivate and for me personally, the way Peter de Villiers um, chirps and makes all these comments on Twitter and social media, I just don't see him as the right man for the job. Or didn't then and I don't now. He had his sparks and I'll give him credit where credit's deserved. But what we must also remember, he took Jake White's team and won with them as well. So that's a lot of Jake's development that went into Peter de Villiers. And Peter de Villiers as well had a great coaching staff. I think, if I'm not mistaken, Rassi was with him. Dick Muir was with him. So he had great leadership behind him. From uh, Peter de Villiers, we went to Heineken Mayer. Heineken Mayer for me was a good choice as a coach and he had his moments and I, what I loved about him the most was his passion for the game he went berserk when we scored a try he went berserk when we were close I loved his passion and love for the game and the respect for the jersey and for the emblem but unfortunately he had his ways that was just kicking kind of rugby blue ball old blue balls type of rugby he favored in my opinion the older blokes who maybe should have been pushed aside like the Victor Matt Fields and all those guys to produce the young players like what Jake did to develop them to what now could be an outstanding team. Um, he did have his favorites of his Blue Bull players, not all, so don't slaughter me Blue Bulls fans, but those were my issues with them. Then we got to Alistair Kutsia, we all know how that went and I'm not going to go much into that because I've shared my opinion on Alistair Kutsia quite a number of times. And besides, he's 1.8 million bucks richer, so good for him. And he's going to probably go to Japan, so he's still got a career involved in rugby. He had his sparks, but unfortunately he was too nice 
um, and just couldn't admit to when failure was happening or when there were problems. So enough about that, back to Rusty Rasmus. So out of all the coaches that I've just mentioned, I'm not going to go to Kitch Christie and before that time because I was too young. I'm talking about the times I knew. If I have to highlight three of those coaches for me before Rusty, it's obviously Nick, Jake, and um, Heineke, and then I'd say Peter V. So those were my three, Jake, Nick, and Heineke. But f for me now, going forward, it's Rusty Erasmus. He's been a director of rugby, SA Rugby. He's been involved with the juniors. He is still the director of SA Rugby and coach. And for me personally, I think that's an outstanding thing because he can see below in South African rugby what's happening around South African rugby and he's well can focus on his team so who better to have a better insight within the rugby on the academies the provincial level than the man himself who's going to actually coach so he's got his hand in everything within South African rugby so that will develop and grow and to me personally I see that being as a massive advantage within Springbok rugby so I see a lot of positives Look, he's got a lot of work to do. He's got probably one of the hardest jobs in world rugby because of the challenges of transformation, the quota system, politics in sport, um, and just so many talented players that are going overseas. He's got to fight with all of that. And in all honesty, all the coaches that have coached the Springboks have had a tough job. But personally, for me, I wish him all the best of luck. I hope and pray that he can bring the South African rugby team back to where they were a few years ago. You hear it from all the people around the world, especially on my channel here, wanting to see South African rugby back, wanting to see the competitive spirit, wanting to see the great rivalry between New Zealand and South Africa. He's got a big year. He's got Wales in the States. Then he's got England, three tests. That is going to be the challenge of the year. Then we've got the rugby championships of so New Zealand, Australia, Argentina, and then the end of year tour, which is going to be a number. So he's got probably one of the biggest years for him. And as a coach to come into to develop and change his team before this, but he's got time to do it. And um, obviously next year is the Rugby World Cup. So a big year, big ask for us here, Rasmus. But I have faith and belief that he is the right man for the job. I see him taking spring, the Springboks far. And I wouldn't be surprised if we're talking about the Springboks in a positive and great manner. Because that's where I want them to be. And I wish him all the best. And yeah, that's going to do it for today's video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to smash that thumbs up button. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel. Super Rugby predictions are coming out tomorrow, so make sure you subscribe for that. And I'll see you guys real soon for another video. Stay safe and never give up. Cheers.